So a bunch of you guys requested me to make a leg day video. So here you are. Now, I already know that this video is going to be less popular than my push and pull day video, simply for the reason that legs aren't as popular of a muscle group to hit. And you know what? That's okay. Some people just don't care about their legs. And I must say, I am kind of in that camp as well. I don't particularly enjoy leg training. I do it because I simply don't want chicken legs. I do want the mass in my lower body to match the mass in my upper body. Now, a leg day is pretty probably the easiest day to construct if you're following a push-pull leg split. We only need to hit four different muscles, the quads, the glutes, the hamstrings and the calves. On a pull or a push day, you need to structure the program so that you hit every single muscle equally hard and thus follow a maximizing program. That is, you need exercises that hit all kinds of different muscles separately, even the small ones. At least that's how I do it. A leg day, however, is always much shorter. You're not going to try and hit all the different different quad muscles for example right you're not going to train the vastus lateralis and the medialis separately in truth doing some kind of knee extension for the quads and a hip hinge and leg curl for the hamstrings and then some calf work that's pretty much going to encompass the entire leg day already and keep in mind that this is an example of how I would construct a leg day. You don't have to follow this day to a T. On the contrary, I recommend you to tweak the program to your liking so that it suits you. So feel free to add stuff, remove stuff, change stuff, however you would like. Now let's get into it. Now with the leg day, it's best to start with compound movements. Why? Because they're the most taxing ones and they're going to build the most mass. There is the concept of pre-fatiguing, that is doing some isolation movements beforehand, but for most people, it's going to be enough and even a better idea to simply warm up well first. That is no static stretching, as again, static stretching has been shown to decrease performance, but you can implement some dynamic stretching for sure and then simply work up to your working set. Okay, so for the first movement, I recommend you start with some heavy knee extensions to hit the quads primarily. The best example of this is, well, squats. A simple barbell squat is my preferred choice for starting a leg day. However, smith squats, hack squats, and even a heavy leg press is going to be fine. But keep in mind that the smith and hack squat variations are going to be much more quad dominant. This means that potentially you will utilize the glutes less. So if you do want to start with pure quads, then I think the hack squat is going to be your best bet, as it doesn't involve as much lower back, hamstrings, and glutes. You're also less likely to develop an injury when hack squatting or smith machine squatting. However, doing a regular barbell squat with good form should be fine. Now, as we're targeting mostly quads, if you do go with a barbell back squat variation, then choosing the high bar squat is probably going to be best. What this does is it keeps your body more upright, resulting in more knee flexion and less hip flexion, which shifts more low to the quads. However, keep in mind that the variation you choose must be comfortable for you. Doing a barbell back squat while you don't enjoy the variation is simply not the best choice. You could also opt for a front squat which even further increases the hip angle and results in even more knee flexion hitting the quads even more. So in short pick a heavy quad extension movement such as a back squat, front squat, smith squat, hack squat or even a leg press and do it heavy. If an exercise is uncomfortable you can also apply small tweaks such as placing plates under your heels while squatting. Now the rep range kind of depends on you as well as the exercise. Because while you can build muscle in all kinds of different rep ranges, on heavy movements such as squats, your best bet is probably going to be to stay in lower rep ranges, as going for 15 reps on a squat will probably burn out your cardiovascular system before your muscles reach actual failure. Therefore going for around 5 to 8 reps for 3 sets should be fine, but you can also go higher or lower. Then we move on to another compound movement, we're doing hip hinges. Now, I explained why hip hinges are so great in my hamstring exercises tier list video. In short, to grow the hamstrings most efficiently, you want to hit the hams in their stretched as well as in their contracted position. To hit the stretched position, you do hip hinge movements like RDLs, stiff leg deadlifts, and good mornings. To isolate the hams, you hit them by doing leg curls such as a Nordic hamstring curl or a lying or seated leg curl. I think it's best to start with hip hinges, however, since they're going to be more taxing. So, my preferred choice is doing a simple Romanian deadlift aka RDL. I think that compared to other hip hinge movements such as again stiff leg deadlifts or good mornings or even regular deadlifts, they are the safest and result in the best stretch for the hamstrings with the most load. Again, really do make sure to stretch the hams out when doing the movement. I'm not going to spend too much time going over these though, make sure to check out my hamstring exercises tier list video for some inspiration on hip hinge movements. Since this is a heavy compound, doing this one for 2 to 3 sets for around 5 to 8 reps again is also fine, but again you can always tweak the rep range to your liking. 
Next, we move on to some isolation. Let's target the quads by doing leg extensions first. Now, there are not going to be many options to substitute these leg extensions machines as they are very efficient at hitting the quads in their contracted position. Compound movements such as squats are not going to give you that squeeze on the quads, and these are. I do prefer to go a bit higher in terms of reps on these as these aren't going to be too taxing overall. So around 7 to 12 reps is going to be fine for most people for 3 sets. Now, what I said earlier about hitting different quad muscles not making any sense isn't entirely true. Some sources do suggest that pointing your toes in will target a bit more of the outside quad muscle, namely the vastus lateralis, and pointing your toes out will target more of the vastus medialis. Keep in mind that these differences are quite small and that you should only experiment with this if you have glaring weaknesses. If you are a beginner, don't worry too much about that and simply perform the movement as is. After that, we move on to some leg curls. Now you have a couple of options here, a lying leg curl, a seated one, or some body weight variation like a Nordic curl or a glute ham raise. However, I personally generally do not recommend the last two. And that is because doing a body weight variation is going to result in less overall stability and an increased need of activation of other muscles. If you want to purely focus on developing the hands, then a machine leg curl is probably your best bet. There's no proper way to do a leg curl because it's a stupid exercise. Now, whether you go with a seated or lying one, it doesn't really matter. I personally prefer the lying one purely because they're more comfortable, especially when the pad is placed onto your shins instead of on top of your legs with the seated one. Make sure to perform the exercise with good form and not too much momentum because other muscles will take over. Using the same rep range for this one as with the leg extension should be alright. Now pretty much only calves are left. And I'll admit, compared to my upper legs, my calves are lacking. They're small. I haven't been blessed with good genetics, but I won't use that as an excuse, don't worry. I personally just don't simply don't, don't care, care that much about don't my calves. Care. I do train them on every lower body day that I have, but even I recognize that while my calves have gotten stronger, they haven't gotten that much bigger. I therefore recognize that simply doing a couple of calf raises now and then isn't enough, even if you progressively overload in terms of weight. I have heard anecdotes about training them with a ton of volume and then upping the frequency to the max and that this resulted in growth for many. So you know what, from this point on, even though I don't care about my calves, I'm going to try this. I'm going to apply a sort of nucleus overloading principle by training calves every day with high volume unless they're sore. In a couple of months, I will get back to you with my results. But for now, I don't feel like I'm qualified to speak to you about training calves, I'll be honest. The only thing I can tell you is that they haven't grown from a long time of doing calf races two times a week. That's why I'm also not going to be doing a calf exercises tier list anytime soon. I'm sorry to disappoint you guys. Now, after calves, I personally feel that my leg day is finished. We hit the hands with a stretched and isolated movement, and the quads with a heavy and isolated movement. But what about glutes? Well, I personally don't often isolate glutes myself. If you feel like you need to get some more glute work done, then feel free to throw in a couple of hip thrusts or something. However, I feel like that by doing squats and RDLs, you've already hit the glutes a lot. That is only though if you did barbell squats, as the glutes aren't really involved in something like a hack squat. As we take a look at this study for example, we can see that the glutes are being activated nicely a lot more than the hamstrings during squatting. The same goes for the RDL, it's not a pure hamstring movement. That being said, if you do want to isolate the glutes, then go ahead, it's not going to hurt. I personally just feel like it's not necessary for most people if they already did heavy back squats and hip hinges on top of that. So as you can see, a leg day doesn't have to be complicated, it's actually pretty simple. Just make sure to hit the quads first, after warming up of course, with a heavy knee extension such as a barbell back front or smith squat for 3 sets of 5 to 8 reps. After that, move on to some kind of hip hinge to hit the hamstrings and glutes by doing something like an RDL or stiff leg deadlift, again for 2 to 3 sets of 5 to 8 reps. After that, isolate your quads by doing leg extensions with a bit of a higher rep range of 8 to 12 for 3 sets and finish off with the hamstring isolation by doing either a seated, lying or a bodyweight hamstring curl in the same rep and set range. After that, move on to calves, although I've seen that growing calves by doing a couple of sets of calf raises after leg days only is not enough. Thank you for watching, make sure to subscribe and leave a like, sub to my second channel as well and try not to faint while training legs next time.